Good day to you, church. Brother Matt here again. Uh, we're going to continue looking at the uh, book of Acts. We're going to look at Acts chapter 17 today, the first 15 verses. Um, this is where Paul and Silas go to Thessalonica and Berea. And then next week we'll look at uh, when Silas and Timothy stay behind uh, in uh, Berea. And Paul goes on to Athens. I wanted to separate those two segments um, because I had a chance to go to Athens uh, a few years ago and got to go to the top of the Acropolis where the Parthenon is, but also to go out on Mars Hill or what they call the Areopagus, um, where Paul preached to the men of Athens um, about the unknown God. And I wanted to share that experience with you uh, next week. Um, and so right now we're going to look at God's work in Thessalonica. Uh, when Paul and Silas get to Thessalonica, Paul preaches uh, over three Sabbaths. Uh, the Bible says that uh, they came to Thessalonica uh, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as was his custom, went uh, into them and for three Sabbaths uh, reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer, uh, rise again from the dead, and saying, this Jesus, whom I preach to you, is the Christ, the Messiah. And some of them were persuaded, and a great multitude of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women, joined Paul and Silas. Now, Thessalonica was an important uh, port city, about 100 miles uh, from Philippi, about a three-day walk. Um, uh, and modern uh, Thessalonica is still a large and thriving city. So this was an important city uh, for Paul to uh, plant a church, uh, and, and actually he did. Um, it says, and was his custom. Paul first went to uh, the synagogue and preached Jesus crucified and risen again to uh, the Jews and the God-fearing Gentiles there. Uh, Paul's presentation of Jesus had a, a few notable aspects. Uh, first, Paul reasoned with them uh, from the scriptures. In other words, there is an exchange of questions and answers. He dialogued with them uh, from the scriptures. Uh, Paul did uh, the work of explaining. This is another aspect of uh, what Paul did when he preached in the synagogues. Literally, Paul opened the scriptures with clarity and simplicity. Uh, if you know something really well, you are able to explain it uh, very simplistically. Uh, many times uh, when I worked on computer systems for 23 years, uh, I'd talk to people and um, uh, if I ever talked to someone who tried to use a lot of big words to impress me about how much he or she knew about computers, it usually meant they didn't know the computers that well because they couldn't explain it in elementary terms. Uh, but Paul was able to explain uh, the scriptures with clarity and simplicity. Uh, and I think that's important for us to remember, too, when we are trying to teach or to um, explain Scripture to people. Um, you know, many times we use uh, church words that we learn in church, and uh, other people don't understand those words. Uh, a fellow Christian that uh, you may be in Bible study with or you may go to church with might understand those words, but people who've never been exposed to uh, the Bible or its teaching may not understand some of those words you use, so you gotta be careful when um, you explain or teach a scripture to someone else. Uh, do it with clarity and simplicity like Paul. Uh, thirdly, Paul uh, did the work of demonstrating that the Christ, the Messiah, Jesus, had to suffer and rise again from the dead. Paul pers presented persuasive evidence um, before the listeners. And then Paul uh, emphasized in all of this, who Jesus is. Jesus, he says, this Jesus who am I preach to you is the Christ. And uh, what he did for them, he, he suffered and died and he rose again uh, from the dead for the forgiveness uh, of our sins. Uh, and then lastly, some of them were persuaded. Uh, among the hearers, uh, there was um, a good response from some. Uh, most of those, actually a, a great multitude, were devout Greeks, but also many prominent Jewish women. Uh, it says not a few of the leading women 
uh, by all accounts, the work was a success. A great multitude, it says, believed. Not just a few, but a great multitude. When Paul was in uh, Thessalonica, uh, he received uh, financial support uh, for the Christians uh, in, in Philippi. Uh, they helped with the successful work among the Thessalonians. Um, and so that's important. Uh, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ helping other brothers and sisters in Christ. We do that today still. Uh, but then there was a, a, a movement uh, by a bunch of violent men uh, against Paul and Silas. Uh, the Bible says, but the Jews who were not persuaded uh, became envious and took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathered a mob and uh, set out uh, into the city uh, with an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. But when they did not find them, they dragged, uh, they went to the house of Jason to look for Paul and Silas. But when they couldn't find Paul and Silas, they drugged Jason and some of his uh, brethren that were in the house, probably, you know, having church uh, to the rulers in the city, crying out, uh, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. That's a compliment, by the way. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, Jason had, had harbored them, and, and, and these are uh, all, you know, uh, acting contrary to the decrees of uh, Caesar. That's what these, this mob was saying, um, that uh, they're, they're uh, trying to install another king, King Jesus, uh, and they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city uh, when they had heard these things. Um, it's interesting that uh, this also happened uh, in Pisidian Antioch uh, at Iconium and at Lystra on the first missionary journey. And it's happening again here in Thessalonica. Paul uh, was opposed by a mob incited by envious people among the Jewish uh, people there. Uh, Jason, now, he was a, a Christian in Thessalonica uh, whose house seemed to have been uh, where everybody met. That was the, the center uh, for the church. Uh, and when these evil men from the marketplace uh, couldn't find Paul and Silas, they, they attacked Jason and uh, brought him before um, the magistrates and the leaders of the city. Uh, and what's interesting is they actually are giving these, these Christians a compliment these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Um, you know, when accusing these Christians before the rulers of the city, uh, they, they gave this unintended, um, you know, unintended uh, compliment uh, of the effectiveness of God's work through Paul and Silas. Uh, these Christians had turned the world upside down. In other words, these men uh, have radically impacted our world and nothing seems the same. Uh, uh, do people say such things about the effectiveness of Christians today? Do they say that about you and me? Are we turning the world upside down? Are we making an impact in our community? Are we changing things uh, in such a way that it doesn't seem the same anymore? Uh, one might say that Jesus uh, did not come to only be a, a teacher, but to turn the world upside down. And Jesus turns the thinking and the power structures of this world around. Uh, Jesus gave a great example of this upside down thinking when he spoke of a rich man who had amassed a, a great wealth. And all he could think about was building, you know, more uh, barns to store all his wealth. Now, we might make that man a, a civic leader or recognize him as a prominent, you know, man in our community. Jesus turned it all upside down and called the man a fool because he had done nothing uh, in his life to make a difference for God's kingdom. Uh, and so we need to re remember that uh, the things that we do here on this earth uh, either have uh, no eternal significance or they have eternal significance. Uh, and the things that have eternal significance are everlasting. Uh, so we need to think about that when uh, we are doing the things that we do from day to day. Are we making a difference for God's kingdom? Uh, and actually God was working through Paul and Silas to turn uh, the world right side up again. Uh, and he wants uh, to work through us as well. Um, then um, it says, the Bible says, uh, these are all acting contrary to the, to the 
the uh, decrees of Caesar saying there's another king, King Jesus. Now, this was a, a serious uh, accusation made uh, by the evil men from the marketplace. Uh, the charge was serious enough that it troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard uh, these things because this raised the fear that the city might become known uh, for its opposition against uh, Caesar and Rome. And if that was the case, then, you know, Caesar could send, uh, you know, legions of soldiers down there and, and quell this rebellion pretty quickly. Uh, but the fears were unfounded. Even though um, the gospel has definite political uh, implications, it makes Christians better citizens than before. And their prayers for officials of uh, the government, both you know local and, and uh, state and national leaders, are, are more helpful than most people imagine. Uh, our prayers for our leaders make a difference. Uh, even the unfounded accusation of political revolution had a, a compliment hidden inside of it. Uh, even the evil men from the marketplace understood that Christians taught that Jesus was a king, uh, that he had the right to rule over his people. Uh, and this is a message that seems to be missed uh, by many uh, today. Uh, Jesus is the king. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, and so Paul and Silas leave Thessalonica by night. Uh, when the officials released Jason and uh, the rest of his men, uh, they immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. Uh, so Paul and, and Silas leave Thessalonica quickly, not wanting to bring more persecution on the Christians there or cause Jason to get into further trouble with the officials. Uh, Paul only spent a few weeks in Thessalonica. But it seems that he wanted to teach them more, so he decided to teach them in a written letter. And many believe 1 Thessalonians was the very first letter he ever wrote to a congregation. And then we get into God's work in Berea, and that work there was successful as well. The Bible says when they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. Uh, these were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received uh, the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out uh, whether these things were so. Uh, therefore, um, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. In, in Berea, Paul and Silas followed their familiar strategy and found uh, that their audience was more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. Uh, two things earned this compliment for, uh, for the Bereans. First, they received the word with all readiness. And second, they searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Uh, the Bereans heard the teaching of the most famous apostle and theologian in the early church and the human author of at least 13 New Testament books. Yet they searched the scriptures when Paul taught to see if his teaching was truly biblical. Uh, they would not accept Paul's teaching without checking it out for themselves so they could know that these things were so. Uh, when the Bereans heard Paul teach, they wanted to know if these things were true. Uh, does this man teach the truth? Uh, we, we must search the scriptures daily to find out whether these things are so. Uh, we don't need to just take someone's word for it. Uh, we need to study it ourselves. We need to learn it ourselves. And we need to ask the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and insight uh, when we do study God's word. Uh, their research was not casual. It had a certain uh, character. They searched the scriptures. Uh, it was worth it to them to work hard at it and investigate what the word of God said and how Paul's teaching matched up with it. Uh, they also searched the scriptures daily to find out um, it, it wasn't a, a one-time quick look at scriptures. They made it a point to be diligent uh, and extended their study. Also, they searched the scriptures daily to find out um, if they could understand the Bible better, to find out the truth uh, of the Bible. Uh, for them, and hopefully for us, the Bible is more than just a book of poetry or mystery or spiritual inspiration. It is a book of truth, and the truth is there for us to discover. Uh, but with all the, um, but with all their diligence. Uh, searching uh, and, you know, trying to dig out these nuggets of truth, uh, the Bereans did not become skeptics. They received the word with all readiness. 
when Paul preached, they had open hearts, but they had clear minds. Uh, many people have clear heads, but closed hearts and never received the word with all readiness. It was both of these things that made the Bereans more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. Therefore, many of them believed. Paul had nothing to fear about the diligent searching of the scriptures by the Bereans. Uh, if they were really seeking God and his word, they would find out that Paul was preaching the truth. And this is exactly what happened among the Bereans, and therefore many of them uh, believed. Then Paul is forced to leave Berea. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came over and stirred up the crowd again. They immediately uh, sent Paul away to go to the sea. Both uh, Silas and Timothy remained behind so they could continue the teaching. But Paul leaves to go to Athens. Uh, the Jews from uh, Thessalonica were, were not satisfied to, to force Paul out of their city. They even followed Paul to Berea to disrupt his work there. And they stirred up the crowd again. Uh, this was the fifth city uh, where Paul was run out by an angry mob, stirred up by envious Jewish leaders. Uh, what would happen uh, to your faith uh, if you were run out of town for preaching the gospel? You know, uh, John Wesley was run out of many towns. And yet he continued to preach the gospel just like Paul uh, continues to preach uh, the gospel. Then the Bible says, Then immediately the Christians of Berea sent Paul away to Athens, fearing for his life. But both uh, Silas and Timothy remained there because Paul wanted to leave them behind to teach and take care of the new Christians in Berea. Uh, the fact that both uh, Silas and Timothy remained there showed again that Paul had a passion for planting churches, not just making converts. It also showed that Paul didn't believe that he alone could do the work of teaching and strengthening Christians. Men like Silas and Timothy uh, also needed to help. No one person uh, can do the work of the Lord in a church or in a city. We all need to work together. We need all hands on deck. Amen. Well, I hope that uh, the Lord will continue to bless you this day. I pray that uh, you will be safe, uh, be healthy, and stay in Christ's arms. God bless you all. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.